Hi, and welcome to the Electronics and Programming Beginner's Guide. Today, as I promised, we're going to go over some common errors associated with uh, programming a PIC microcontroller, meaning that uh, what kind of errors is the IDE, including the PICKIT, going to give you as you try to program them. So the first one I wanted to talk about, and I can't really reproduce it because I've only ever seen it in one place, and that's uh, on a work laptop. And the error will be something along the lines of, uh, if it's a 5-volt uh, processor, the PIC is trying to supply 5 volts, but uh, is only able to supply, you know, let's say, 4.85 volts or something along those lines. So my work laptop is the only one I've ever come across that error with, and what that error is saying is that uh, the USB ports on the uh, laptop are too weak. And when I measured the voltage coming out of the USB ports, they were actually making only 4.85 volts, not the 5 volts as you would normally expect from the USB ports. Uh, the only fix that I really found for the issue is either turning the voltage down to 4.85 volts, which doesn't always work, or to use an external uh, US powered USB hub, which uh, provides the uh, pick it with the correct voltage, and then the data comes in uh, from your laptop without any issue. So now let's uh, jump over to, uh, I'm gonna try picture in picture again. I thought it worked reasonably well uh, in the last video. And uh, this time I'm trying a new uh, screen capture software because the I was having issues with the previous screen capture software where when I captured for, uh, let's say, over about 15 minutes, uh, the sound and, uh, and video didn't sync up anymore, even though I had the checkbox enabled for resyncing the audio. But whatever. All right, let's uh, jump over. Okay, so the setup right here is the familiar setup that we looked at in the previous video. We have our uh, DSPIC 33, uh, we have the cable, and it's hooked up to our PICKIT 3. So uh, let's take a look at the first and one of the most common errors. So what you do is you go ahead and hit uh, Make and Program Device. Okay, uh, first it'll do a build, and now the uh, in the Picket 3 output window right here, you'll see the target device was not found. You must connect a target device to the Picket 3, but it's connected. It's right here. You can, you can see the cable and everything. So what this error actually means is that uh, when the Picket starts up, it'll check its VDD pin and see if there's any power on the VDD pin. So, the purpose for this is to see if it can actually detect power because the device needs to be powered to program. If the device isn't powered, then we're wasting our time. So, something I did behind the scenes before I started shooting is if we go up here to run set project configuration customize. And let me drag this over here because I'm going to have the other video... Uh, sitting up in this area. So now we go to picket 3 and now we go to power and behind the scenes earlier I actually unchecked this box so the picket no longer provides power to the board. So if I hit OK and once you hit OK the picket does not automatically start providing power right away you have to run at least one you know at least one programming cycle. So Let's go ahead and uh, run that programming cycle, and now the picket will start supplying power and program the device. Uh, should be without any issue. So there we go. Uh, let me scroll down like that. See, target detected. It found the device ID revision, and it programmed the device verified complete, and now our LED is blinking. There's a problem with the picket supplying power, uh, which are the two problems. First of all, if your device consumes a lot of current, the picket can only supply just a little bit of current. Uh, the second problem is, and let me show you, if I unplug the chip from the picket and then run another programming cycle like that, 
it will show that the target was detected. The target is detected because the picket is supplying power, sorry, the picket is supplying power to the VDD pin, and we uh, get to our second most common error. And uh, as I mentioned before, you'll, you'll notice right here, target was detected because the picket is supplying power, and this target device ID 0x0 does not match the expected device IDs, blah, 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 blah. So you can hit OK on that error, and usual for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave this up, but I'm going to not check this box so it comes up every time, but in a regular project, I'll normally just uh, check this box and hit OK. So now it'll try to program the processor anyway, but it's going to say failed. So what does this error actually mean? This target device ID 0x0 does not match the expected device ID. What that means is that the PIC kit is trying to communicate with the processor over these two data lines, the uh, ICSP DAT and ICSP clock. And when it's not able to, this is the error that it comes up with. So uh, let me show you some variation. Well, let me show you some variations on that same error. So let's say that I plug this back in. Oh, uh, there we go. So the as you can see, the light is blinking. The processor is getting power. But now I'm going to take one of these pins and I'm going to disconnect it like that. Oh. Let me put it off to the side. And then let me run another programming cycle. And we will get the same error. It'll say target detected because the picket is the one supplying power. But it'll say, there we go, target ID does not match expected device. In this case, I'm going to hit cancel because we already know what the problem is. One of these lines is disconnected. So let me plug that line back in like that and let me just go through and show you that it will actually program with both of those lines connected and there we go device ID revision it found it yada yada programming complete so what are some other things that can uh, give this code uh, if there's high resistance on these lines between the lines and the processor it will give you an error if there's capacitance on these lines, extra capacitance, it will give you an error. And let me show you that. So right here we have a, just, this is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And we're going to put this in carefully between the line and ground, just like that. Just a little capacitance. And let's go ahead and run another programming cycle. And same thing, target detected, device ID is not found. So anything that screws with these data lines will cause that error. Also, if the processor isn't powered properly, it will also cause that error. And let me show you that. Let me hit cancel over here. And this is easier to do with pliers. There we go. So now if I yank out this wire, the processor is no longer powered. Uh, the the picket is supplying power up to this point, but then the processor isn't powered. So if I run this, the programming cycle again, it'll say target detected, but device ID Well, that actually really surprises me. Because the process... Oh, I see. So something I neglected to do is that uh, this processor must be backfed. Uh, the, the programming circuits must also be backfed from the... Oh, sorry, from the A, A, G, and D stuff over here. So if I take this jumper and pop it out like that, there we go. Go ahead and program that, and now it shouldn't program. So, especially in processors that have multiple powers and grounds, there we go, now we're getting that error, cancel. In a processor that has multiple powers and grounds, you can run into issues that if you forget to hook up some of the powers and grounds, the processor may still program, but it will act wonky.
because as we saw whenever I yanked out this wire the light stopped blinking so let me put this jumper back like that and let me put this one back like that and there we go you see that the the light started blinking whenever I put right when I put this wire back in so another thing that can cause that same error are you guys seeing a pattern here this is the most common error so is the V cap is the, if the V cap is not correct the processor core can't run correctly and you will fail programming so let me yank this V core out and go ahead and run another programming cycle And there we go, target device ID does not match. And, said, and that's because the core is not running correctly. So always be sure to put the, this VCAP is very, very important. Let me go ahead and put that back. Just like that. So uh, once again, uh, things that can cause the target device ID zero. If the processor isn't powered correctly, if all of the powers and grounds aren't hooked up correctly, if the VCAP is missing, if something is wrong with the uh, programming lines. So for example, if you have, let's say, an LED attached to one of your programming lines, it won't program correctly. Uh, if you have uh, something with high capacitance attached to one of these programming lines, it won't program. There's so many things that will cause it to do that. So now let's look at another error. And that one, the final one, we'll just go with that, is if we take the VDD wire and hook it up to VSS, just like that. So the first thing to notice is that this light changed. Let me show you that one more time, it, the status light. Oh, hold on, let me run another programming cycle like that. There we go. All right, you saw, uh, you saw green and the processor is empowered, so it's normal that we get this error cancel so you see a green but when I plug it into uh, VSS I, I create a short uh, get in there we go so I created a short now that status light went red so when I run a programming cycle now I get a different error and this error is too much current has been drawn on VDD please disconnect your circuit check Sorry, let me hit cancel on that. So it's this is the one that's important, and that's the picket knows that it's drawing too much power. The picket is protected from drawing too much power, but if you have some sort of a short on any one of your lines, that's the error you'll get. Let me move this back like that. There we go, and you can see the picket is still providing power without any kind of issue. And let me go ahead and program that again. And there we go, target detected, device ID revision, etc. So a couple other things. Uh, the uh, Whenever you're wiring up the picket, let's say you're designing your own board and you're wiring up the uh, programming header on the picket, you always want to bring both VDD and VSS out to that header because if the VDD isn't brought out, let's say you just leave a blank or don't hook it up because, well, my circuit's powered externally. Uh, it'll cause you problems because the pit kit does not know that it's plugged into something. Also, like I said, uh, you want to avoid any kind of resistances or capacitance on these lines or you get that uh, target device ID does not match. Uh, you want to make sure that all of your powers and grounds are hooked up and that VCAP is very important. So I know I've said this a whole bunch of times, but I just wanted to repeat it because I know it's important. This is a... a a real issue for people that first start up with these uh, processors. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, I checked this beforehand. Uh, these uh, two decoupling caps that I have on here. Here, oh, sorry, maybe it'll be easier with uh, these. The, there's a cup decoupling capacitor here. Sorry, kind of hard to see. There's one right there, and there's one uh, uh, right there. You can kind of see it. 
I did check that when I pull those decoupling capacitors, this processor will still program. Possibly the reason for that is this breadboard does have quite a bit of straight capacitance, which could be just enough to keep those lines up. But always be sure to put decoupling capacitors across power and ground because that can also cause you programming issues. Uh, generally, in the uh, target device ID does not match. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like my videos, uh, please subscribe on YouTube and uh, said always uh, give me a big old thumbs up. And if there's anything that you're interested in seeing, please leave it in either my YouTube comments or the uh, comments on my website.